Hey everyone, Tony from TN3D Studio and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a scene breakdown of this exterior render in V-Ray 5. Before we get started, let's take a look at some references of what will lead into our wood cabin. So if you follow me on Pinterest, you can see some of my board collections, including the one that has inspired this 3D model. So I collected everything from forest landscapes, lighting conditions, basically everything that I needed to capture the essentials of a wood cabin residence. And this is my result. So overall, this is a very typical and minimal design. So if we take a look at some of the 3D details, I made sure some of the components are modeled to high quality from the roof, the gutters, the downsprouts, and some of the trims on the model, they all have high segments and rounded edges. As for the railing around the deck, they are all modeled as components and the textures for the materials are a minimum of 1K resolution and higher. So as for the interior, everything is still a work in progress, but the exterior is ready for some tests and that's where we're going to get started. Before we continue, give this video a like, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. This will help with the growth of the channel as well it keeps you notified the next time we drop a new video. So let's break down the composition of the scene. As for our background, I downloaded this from the 3D warehouse and it's placed on the scene to give the intention that there's something further in the background. Next, we got the site terrain and everything was modeled in SketchUp with the sandbox tool. I wanted to come as close to a forest environment, so I made sure to create some uneven grounds on the terrain as well as to add some slope. And to connect both the site with the cabin, I added a walkway that leads to the main entrance as well as off to the sides. Next, I spent some time in Chaos Cosmo to find the best possible 3D assets for the scene. Cosmo is free, fast, easy to use, and they are always adding new 3D assets. So first I looked for some rocks that would complement a natural site, and I found these group of rocks with rough surfaces, and I figured these will look great once scattered in the scene. I also looked for some trees, in particular a variety of trees that belong in the same family and I found these six pine trees that are very tall in height and this is going to help us with the sense of scale. As for the grass, I wanted a variety of grass and other plants so I landed on a few field grass patch, some shrubs and some wild grass and I imagine these will look very good once scattered together. For more curated assets, I checked the 3D warehouse and there I found some very good high quality models like this mountain rock cliff, this wood log, and some wood beams. And a quick tip, any models that are heavy in size, I convert them to proxy and that is the case with this wood log. This is going to help to keep a light model and just also to avoid lag and crash in your file. So here's a collection of all my assets together. The goal is to capture a natural look and feel of a forest environment. So now let's take a look at the placement of all of these assets on the actual model. So the aspect ratio for this render is 5 by 4 and for now everything is going to be framed within the, for this example. So we already have the background and the site. As for the rock cliff, I placed it in the background so the landscape doesn't feel flat beyond the cabin. This is going to give the illusion that the landscape is a little bit more organic. As for the wood log being a high quality 3D asset, I placed it in the foreground so the details enhance the quality of the render. As for the wood beams, I wanted to use it as a story element so I might rearrange these later on as well as add some other elements. Next I have the rough rocks in the foreground, this is going to enhance the landscape and being that they are high quality, the details are going to be very prime in the renders and that's why I wanted them close to the camera. And last we have the trees, I placed these manually on the landscape because I wanted to frame the cabin as well as the sky. Being that they are so high, this is going to bring up that sense of scale and really give us that human feel from this perspective. So everything else is scattered in the scene using the new V-Ray 5 scatter. This goes for the trees far in the background as well as the grass in the foreground. 
I have three separate scatter settings for assets that are roughly the same size. And just to skim through, these are my settings for some of the distributions, nothing too complicated. So without going into too much detail, I will link a full tutorial on how to use the new V-Ray scatter in the corner of the screen as well as in the description. So this is the entire model with the placement of all the assets and now we can start to test the lights and see how everything comes together. So this is the first rendering of the scene with the default sun and sky as the main source of light. And taking a look at our references, this is the result that I'm trying to achieve. An overcast cloudy sky with very soft shadows. We also have the mist coming in and some warm lights coming from the inside of the cabin. So the first step is to add an HDRI that's going to give us the overcast environment. So let's go back into Chaos Cosmo, into the HDRI section. And going through the options, I came across this HDRI, Day 035, which seems to fit perfect for this example. So let's import this HDRI into our scene. Now I already have an HDRI ready to use, but first let's disable the V-Ray Sun and Sky so the HDRI becomes the main source of light. So next, let's go into our texture tab and copy our HDRI texture and paste it in the dome light texture settings. As for the settings, you want to try out different values for the intensity to see what best fits your scene. But most importantly, I check the use transform so I can rotate the HDRI sky to fit the scenario I want to achieve. So this is the result with the HDRI lighting. I really like the overcast with the soft shadows for this scenario. And now that the environment light is ready, the next step is to add the environment fog. So head over to your V-Ray settings and enable volumetric environment. As for the environment fog, the parameters are very simple. The emission color is the fog's self-illumination. So I went ahead with a desaturated navy blue so I can add some cool tones to the fog. As for the distance, the lower this value, the closer the fog is to the camera and the denser it appears. So I set a very high value here because I want to see the fog far in the distance. As for the height of the fog, the lower this value, the closer the fog appears to the ground. So we're going to set this value to give our fog a decent height. And these are the final results. So far, we don't have any artificial light on the scene. As for the environment lighting, it's looking very gloomy and dark, which is perfect for what we're trying to achieve. So far we've combined the HDRI lighting and the environment fog and our render may be looking a little bit dark but that is okay. We're going to fix that by adding some V-Ray lights to compensate in the dark areas. So quick note, all of my light fixtures are modeled as components so changing one of them will affect all the other copies. And as you can see I already have all my lights placed in the model. I use an IES light for the exterior walls of the cabin a rectangular light by the front door. For the interior, I added a few spotlights. And we have some mesh lights that follow the walkway. And there are also a couple other lights in the scene. They may not be visible from this view because of the placement and the distance. Now, if you're not using V-Ray 5, you might have to edit all your V-Ray lights one by one. This means adjusting the intensity and changing the color temperature. But if you're using V-Ray 5, you can use Light Mix to edit all of your lights at once. So right click in your render element and add Light Mix from the list. Here you can choose how you want to edit your lights since I don't have that many lights in the scene. So I'm going to select to edit them by group. So the goal here is to add some warmth. Obviously we want to create some sort of hierarchy in the lights where some of them are more intense than the others. So let's turn off all of our lights and we'll start by adjusting the interior spotlights as I want to make it one of the main lights in the scene. So let's increase the intensity to 6 and change the color temperature to 3000 Kelvin. 
and as you can see it already adds a bit of a mood to the image so I'm going to repeat this same step to all the other lights. And this is the best thing about using light mixing in Vary 5. You're editing all of your lights collectively. This saves time, speeds up your workflow, and lets you be more creative. And this is where we're at so far, looking pretty good. As for the self-illumination, this happens to capture most of the fog, so I'm going to add a hint of blue so we can have some color contrast in the environment. So this is our result. We now added all the artificial lights in the scene. And again, the possibilities with light mix are pretty much endless. But from here, we can start to think about materials and make an adjustment towards the final render. As for the materials in the scene, I followed a PBR approach for materials like the wood planks, the roof metal, because these are the materials that stand out most in the scene and from the perspective of our view. If you want to learn how to create PBR materials, there will be a tutorial linked on the screen as well as in the description. So this is our final render, I'm very happy with this result and I think this render is ready for some post production and that's what I'm going to cover in the next segment of this video whether that's in Photoshop or with the V-Ray Frame Buffer, be sure you're subscribed so you are notified when that video is uploaded. Before we conclude, maybe you'll be wanting to take your V-Ray skills to the next level, and that's why I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning, wants to explore their creativity, and learn a new skill. If your goal is to improve your V-Ray skills, you may want to consider the, the V-Ray 5 Masterclass by Minish Paul Simmons. This class is structured in a way that is easy to learn. You get to create a full interior scene as well as having a full understanding of using V-Ray 5. You get to learn how to use render elements, create PBR materials, unique lighting conditions, and learn how to use the V-Ray Frame Buffer. So if you're serious about achieving your goals this year, Skillshare, Skillshare is the best way to invest in yourself and in your personal growth. Skillshare classes are ad-free so you can stay in the zone and you have new premium classes each week so you always have something new to discover. So the first 1000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free of Skillshare. So if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, click that link in the description and we thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And that's where we're going to end the video. Be sure to take advantage of that free Skillshare membership. The link is in the description. As always, thank you for watching all the way till the end of the video. Make sure you follow us on other social media platforms. As always, I'll see you guys next time.